Engine boost activated. Alright, so we're back once again today, and today we're playing the Gearing, the USDD, Tier 10, one of my favourite ships in the game. And we're featuring, featuring it on a little bit of a weird map, as you see I get a little bit of lag. Some, some lockdown seems to be affecting the internet rates, um, so videos might be coming, about, coming out a little bit slower, but they still will be coming out. Um, the gameplay might be a little bit more jaggedy, but it still will be playable. So with that being said, let's get into it. Again, we're playing on the ocean map today. It's a bit, a bit. I don't really like this map. Eh, it seems very basic. It, you just, there's no real kind of outplay potential. There's no real tactics involved. You know, if I go here, if I go behind this island, I can, you know, get some good fire off. Um, mostly just, you have to rely on your smoke, use it effectively, and hope that everything pans out. That being said, we are playing the gearing and we are up against a bit of a tough lineup. Again, they have a Shimakaze, a Kaba, and a Yuyang. We have a gearing, a daring, and a Kaba. Now, generally, when I play DDs, I only really look at either radar cruisers or other DDs to, to, to um, basically get an idea of how I want to play the game. And basically, I don't want to meet the Kaba. Generally, I don't even want to meet another gearing unless I have backup. And the Yu Yangs eh, can be hit or miss. So with that being said, I'm playing really passive. Again, we do get the radar on the enemy gearing, so he's going to be forced to vacate the area. I smoke up so I can't be fired back on. Again, noting that the Des Moines has to be spotted, the Worcester's on the other side of the map. I can't really be radared, so I'm pretty safe. The only really threat comes from torpedoes from, you know, said gearing. But, as you'll see in a little bit, I start to angle just to mitigate that threat a little tiny bit. Now, this game I want to focus on something, is that... Smoke if you if you watched my previous video, I, may, I gave a little bit of a discussion about win rate and damage, and within that whole conversation, there's like priorities you need to implement in the game in order to um, actually stick to that kind of philosophy of maximizing win rate versus damage. And one of those philosophies is focusing on capping. Capping should be probably the most, one of the most, if not, yeah, probably the most important thing you should be focusing on in the game. You should be constantly asking yourself, can I cap? Can I cap at this point? Can I cap right now? Am I going to get shot at if I cap? Am I going to get raided if I can cap? Is this a good time to cap? These questions should always be running through your mind when you're playing the game. And at this point, I noticed that the gearing left the point. I noticed that the Des Moines is within radar range, but I think it's an acceptable risk to take just because of the fact that if you look on the minimap, I'll enlarge it a little bit, you can see I have the curve first, the Smolensk, another curve, well, okay, well, the Smolensk just died, but <laughs> my point still stood. Um, <laughs> I should maybe check HP people a little bit more, but if you'll see, I have, I had a Smolensk, I had a curve first, I had another curve first, and the Wister's only maybe 10 kilometers away. So I had plenty of backup in the case I did get radared. Again, that's obviously not going to help, you know, um, if all the ships are focusing me. But I do have speed boost. I'm pretty decent at dodging. So, again, not the, not the worst Engine situation to be involved activated. in. So I take the cap. That being said, we do also get a cap at the same time. So that means we're 2 to 1 up, which relieves a little bit of the pressure. There's no worse feeling than the enemy having three caps, but you're winning the actual surface war. It's such a claustrophobic feeling, and it really restricts how you can actually play the map, because you're always going to be focusing on the timer at the top of the screen, not actually at, you know, the gameplay going on. And it really limits your hand. That being said, foolishly the Yu Yang decides to pop out, we get a couple of pot shots off. I only fired those shots because I knew that the Des Moines was on 10k HP and he'd be focused by 3 or 4 ships. So that meant that any fire I was going to take, maybe from the curve or secondaries, wasn't going to be all that significant. Um, and I can very quickly get undetected. Um, as you see, the Des Moines just popped radar and I just got out of range um, at the last second. 
Now the demand does end up going down, which is actually really beneficial for me. And now this side of the map is completely open. Now, a little bit of a memory check. The Yang, he's pretty goddamn low. There's no way the enemy Gary has as much HP as me. What that affords me is the complete freedom to push in and cap C. Now, usually, you have to be patient with these things. You can't really force them all that much. Again, the Yamato is pushing in towards us. But, again, even better, we do get a detection. Well, he does smoke up. I think that's pretty much a gearing or a Yuyang. It doesn't really matter at this point. Just because of the fact that if I get sp if they spot me, they're dead. Um, so it doesn't really make all that much difference. Now, I did want to tarp the smoke. But, again, we have the Curfers pushing in. And I didn't want to run the risk of him suddenly actually <laughs> moving in the way of my torps. Because you never know the teammates you get in this game. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. Instead, I pull out a little bit. I realized that, you know, the Yamato was pushing full in. So I decided to aim the torps at him instead, instead of the smoke. That just popped up. And so, that's going to be our main focus. Now at this point, we switched from being mainly a torpo. Again, we had 7k damage. To being more of a gumbo while at the same time focusing on capping C. If we get the cap on C, we have A, B, C, and it doesn't really matter at this point, the lead will be start getting so ridiculous so quick. And even if they get a, like a two or three ship lead, it's not gonna matter all that much. Um, we can just play out the clock, um, as long as we defend the caps effectively. We do end up getting two torpedoes on the Yamato. Um, I have to stop shooting. Just, you know, it's just too risky to keep shooting. Um, especially with the curve where secondary is closing in. Um, that being said, once I get behind smoke, I start opening up once again. And the only thing stopping us from capping C is generally um, this Yamato, which is about to go down. Again, probably not the best tactic I would advise on the Yamato, you know, playing it like it grows a curve first, but, you know, um, quarantine can make people do interesting things. <laughs> with that being said, though, um, on this side of the map, again, we did notice now that the Kaba is pushing over to this flank, which is something we need to be really wary of. Um, of all the ships on the enemy team, the Kaba is probably probably one of the ships that I'm scared of the most, and in no circumstances can I actually 1v1 it. Even if, even if the HP ratios were like, you know, I had full HP and maybe he had half HP, I still wouldn't want to take that trade, just because the Kaba is just incredibly devastating as a ship, as a DD, and as a DD destroyer. That being said, we're going to hope and get some torpedoes off in the Grosakur first. Again, these torpedoes, they're 16 kilometers in range, but they aren't the quickest, and they're pretty dodgeable. Um, I think this Kurfer is actually already, um, already dodged some of my torpedoes previously. Um, so we're going to fire off another set. I send one saw with the Kaba, just on a kind of a hit and hope kind of exercise. I'm not expecting all that much. And another one at the Grosso Curve first. Now, this is something I did with out looking at the minimap. I seen if you look, if you remember, those shells that flew in the, at the Kaba uh, before I started shooting. I thought I had a lot more backup than I did, and as a result, that's why I opened up. Under no circumstances, if you look at the minimap, should I be shooting in this situation? Um, Luckily, the Kaba has a bit of a bad shot, so I get away with it. But any competent player in this scenario, I would be absolutely dumpstered at this point. I already lost 6k, and at the same time, only took 4k off the Kaba. That's with two ships, or maybe three ships, actually shooting at it. That's an insane difference. Absolutely insane difference. But the Kaba does end up going down, and as a result, it works out. Not from the result of good play, but as a result, maybe of just a little bit of luck. Um, <clears throat> that being said, if you look at the source core green, we are still even in terms of ship. But if you look at the points, we're up 300 points and have three caps. This is a perfect situation to be. We're winning the game so goddamn hard, even if it doesn't look on the face of it. What this is going to do, as we get another little bit of lag, um, it's going to force the enemy team to actually make a decision. And they're going to have to decide extremely quickly, otherwise it's going to be made for them. And the decision they're going to have to make is, do I push B, 
or do I push a cap together? Or do we split up and try and minimize the damage by pushing all three at once? Um, because otherwise the game's lost. Um, capping one, sh one cap at this point started. isn't really going to be enough, I don't think, to actually meaningfully affect the game. Another decision they could make is trying to eliminate all the enemy ships. But that's not really a possibility because, well, we have three DDs. How are you, how are you on your Grosser Curve first going to catch a DD and eliminate him? I'm not sure they do have a Shimakaze and they do have a Gearing. But, again, those ships, we have a Kaba, we have a Gearing, we have two Gearings. We can easily just eliminate them from the game. And there goes your chasing potential and your spawning potential. So these things, by the de facto of us capping the three points, we basically won the game um, just as a result of capping. And that's maybe the emphasis of this video is that capping is so important. It's just a little, look at that, look at that, look at how, look. Oh my God, that's so insane how he just dodges a little bit. Anyways, back to my point. Um, that ship was tilting me the entire game. He dodged like three or four salvos uh, of my torpedoes in the entire game. But that being said, um, now the game starts to get a little bit dodgy though. Know? Um, at this point, um, the capping becomes the central point of the game because we just lost two ships, but we still have control of all three caps. And my mindset's starting to switch a little bit at this point. I'm thinking, okay, okay, they're far away from the caps, but do I need to switch into survival mode and just let the timer take up? Do I want to be getting this close to the enemy ships? Like, that thunder is getting awfully close, and if he's HE loaded, and I come into and he spots me, uh, that could end really badly for me. That could end with, you know, me being blocked. And if you notice on my other flank, we have the Gearing and the Henry pushing in. So my main priority right now is obviously A, killing the thunder. But on the other hand too, I want to remain in the back of my mind. I really want to stay alive. Well, obviously, obviously I want to stay alive. But it's a much higher priority this time than it would be, you know, in any other, any other game state. Now, I am mindful of the fact that the gear and the enemy is pushing in. Um, and I do have smoke running out in 10 seconds. But we do get the kill on the thunder, which is really important. And this scenario would be really lethal for me if the gearing wasn't so low. And if we didn't have the goats curve first, actually taking damage from the Henri as a distraction. Um, we do luckily get a fire on the gearing. He does go down. And at this point, it's 2v2. We have three caps. It's 900 points to 230. And we're in complete control of this game. Luckily, the Henry does die from a wonderful salvo from the Gothic Um And as a result, we end up winning the game. Now, the end of that game was a lot more dramatic than it probably should have been. Um, you know, if that Grosser Curve first hadn't got that salvo off, that could have went really differently for both of us, because it was just a straight up 1v2. Um, that being said though, the caps afforded us the time to actually um, think things through a lot clearer than we would have otherwise been. If this has been like a 2v1 scenario cap-wise, or maybe a 2, if, maybe if they just got Torpedo two switched start. around Torpedo's and it reversed into like a 2v1 against us. It could have been a lot more um, strenuous and it could have been a lot more, the decision could have been a lot more, you know, hard to come by. But it afforded us the time to actually think things through. And as a result, it's just me versus the Shimakaze. And we all know how that goes. If the Shima doesn't land his torps, he dies. But before that happens, the timer ticks up the game ends, and we end up winning the game. So, until next time, I'll see you in the next one.